Allah folks, this is Sam Hill said, and in that video I will talk to you about the accounting principles. Accounting principles are general rules and guidelines that all companies must follow when reporting all accounts and financial data. It is important to understand that accounting principles are not accounting standards on their own, yet they form the foundation and basis upon which accounting standards are being created and built. And since all companies are encouraged to follow international accounting standards, it is very important to understand what are those accounting principles on which those international accounting standards are created. Stay tuned. Let's kick off by talking about accrual principle. This is a concept that accounting transactions should be recorded in the accounting periods when they actually occur, not in the periods when there are some cash flows associated with them. This is the foundation of accrual basis of accounting. It is important for the construction of financial statements as it shows what actually happened in an accounting period rather than being artificially delayed or accelerated by the associated cash flows. Ignoring the accrual principle, you would record an expense only when you pay for it. However, you may be paying in advance, and that expense belongs to a future period, and that is wrong. The second principle is the conservatism principle. That concept says that you should record expenses and liabilities as soon as possible but to record revenues and assets only and only if you are sure that they will occur and this creates a conservative view of the financial statements. Conversely, this principle tends to encourage the recordation of losses earlier rather than later. This concept can be abused if a business persistently misstates its results to be worse than they really are. The third principle is consistency principle. This concept recommends that once you adopt an accounting method like specific assets depreciation method, you should continue using the same method for different periods. Ignoring the consistency principle means that a business could continually jump between different accounting treatments of its transactions, and that makes its long-term financial results extremely different and not consistent. The fourth principle is the cost principle. This is a concept that all business should only record its assets, liabilities, and equity investments at their original purchase costs or history costs. This principle is becoming less valid as many accounting standards are hidden in the direction of adjusting assets and liabilities to their market fair values. The fifth principle is economic entity principle. This is the concept that all transactions of a business should be kept separate from those of its owners and other businesses as each entity is considered a separate one. This prevents transferring of assets and liabilities among multiple entities, which can cause considerable difficulties for auditing and manipulate the financial statements. The second principle is the full disclosure principle. This is the concept that you should include in the financial statements or alongside them all of the information that may impact a reader's or user's understanding of those statements. The accounting standards have greatly amplified upon this concept in specifying an enormous amount of informational disclosures. The seventh principle is the going concern principle. This concept says that in order to prepare financial statements for a business, that business must be expected to remain in operation for the foreseeable future. If some business is struggling and expected to go bankrupt soon, it means there are going concern issues and financials cannot be prepared. The eighth principle is the matching principle. This is a concept that when you record revenues, you should record all related expenses or costs at the same time. Thus, you charge inventory to the cost of goods sold at the same time that you record revenues from the sale of those inventory items. This cornerstone of the accrual basis of accounting. The cash basis of accounting doesn't use the matching principle. 
The ninth principle is the materiality principle. This is the concept that you should record a transaction in the accounting records if it is material. And materiality means that it is important enough to change the opinion of or decision making process of someone reading the financial statements. This is quite a vague concept as it is difficult to quantify what is material and what is not material. The tenth principle is the monetary unit principle. This is a concept that a business should only record transactions that can be stated in terms of a unit of currency or money. Thus, it is easy enough to record the purchase of a fixed asset since it was bought for a specific price, whereas the value of the quality control system of a business is not recorded as it is hard to calculate in terms of cash or money. This concept keeps a business from engaging in an excessive level of estimation in deriving the value of its assets and liabilities. The eleventh principle is the reliability principle. This is a concept that only those transactions that can be proven or have an evidence should be recorded. For example, a supplier invoice is solid evidence that an expense has been recorded. This concept is of prime interest to auditors who are constantly in search of evidence supporting transactions. The twelfth principle is the revenue recognition principle. This is a concept that you should only recognize revenue when the business has substantially completed the earnings process. That means revenues mustn't be prematurely recorded or postponed to another period. It is stated that most of fraud and creative accounting transactions are related to revenue recognitions. That's why standard setting bodies have developed a massive amount of information about what constitutes proper revenue recognitions. The thirteenth principle is the time period principle. This is a concept that a business should report the results of its operations over a standard period of time, either six months or a year that will make financials of different periods easily comparable and it is useful for trend and financial analysis. Well, we came to the end of that video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon with my next video.